Get rich slow with John Wolf. Hey, today I wanna to talk to you about PMI or mortgage insurance in general. And the main purpose of today's discussion is to explain a little bit about how affordable it can be on a conventional and also how it still exists in basically all of the other loan types and how the credit changes or is better or worse depending on the program. So let's, let's jump right into it. So super basic, PMI stands for private mortgage insurance. Um, there are two ways you can pay for conventional. You can do it upfront or you can pay monthly. Now, often there is a substantial discount for paying upfront. So it, it surprises people sometimes, and this depends drastically on credit score. The more insurance rates also vary by time, just like interest rates, but there's a decent chance that you could put 5% down and then for another 1%, you could fully pay your mortgage insurance for the whole get-go and not have monthly mortgage insurance. Then let me just explain to you how the monthly mortgage insurance is calculated because there's a difference between this and other loans. So for conventional loans, the mortgage insurance is based on the primarily the down payment, the loan amount, and your credit score. Very, very strongly based on your credit score. So if you have a 760 credit score and you're buying a $500,000 house, you might be shocked even with 5% down at how low the mortgage insurance payment is. Uh, it might even motivate you to put less money down than you were thinking about. Now, conversely, if you have something like a 660 credit score and for whatever reason we're doing a conventional, the more insurance is gonna be a lot monthly, especially at 5% down. And that's gonna make FHA potentially look like a much better option. But in any case, uh, the mortgage insurance rate is calculated. It might be a number like 0 0.65. And what that means is, if that's the particular number calculated in your loan case, 0.65%. So if you times your loan amount by 0.65, you will get what you have to pay yearly for mortgage insurance and you can pay that monthly. It's just divided by 12 for each month and it stays at that amount until the mortgage insurance drops to zero. Now let me tell you why the mortgage insurance would drop to zero. So if you get to 78% loan to value from the initial loan, it automatically drops to zero. If you've made all of your payments on time for two years, you can petition the mortgage insurance company, do a new appraisal, if at that point your loan to value is better than 80%, then you can have it removed as well. Most people don't know that. So let's compare that just really quickly and uh, take a look at FHA. So FHA is the next most common loan type and it's really intended to help people get their first home without the best financial status and also to help them recover from a financial hardship, uh, previous foreclosure, bankruptcy, that sort of thing. So this one, it's both upfront and monthly, but it's calculated very differently. So if you get the most common loan types for FHA, you're gonna be paying 0.85 a year, but it's not based on the original loan amount. That number is calculated based on the loan amount every year. So it doesn't ever drop to zero if you're putting the standard 3.5% down, but it goes down every year. So one way to try to compare it apples to apples with conventionals is to just take that 0.85% and add it to the interest rate in general. And mathematically, you'll get pretty close to apples to apples there. Now, there's also an upfront component, and that is 1.75% of the loan amount upfront, and they just roll it into the loan and it increases the initial loan amount, which certainly does increase your monthly payment, and it decreases the amount of money you're gonna get when you sell the house eventually, or provided it's you know, not fully paid off already. So the next common loan type is VA, and there's really two different branches to this discussion. So either, according to the VA, you are or you are not a disabled veteran. I'm sorry, it's not up to me, I can't change that. I have basically no, I have, no, I have actually no power over the VA, just to make that clear. Uh, I do have special phone lines, so I can ask for favors, but that's not anywhere close to something I can actually change for you. Um, now, 
If you are a disabled veteran, then the VA loan is zero upfront and zero monthly mortgage insurance. Fantastic. The VA is also the lowest interest rate loan type. Amazing. So if you put all those things together, that's great. Now, if you aren't a disabled veteran, it's probably a phenomenal deal to do the VA loan at least once and maybe not such a good deal to keep doing it. Let me explain. So the first time you do a VA loan right now, you're charged 2.3% upfront. Now they'll roll that into the loan so you don't have to come up with that cash out of pocket and it's still a great deal. The reason that kind of erodes over time, and I might be forgetting the exact numbers here, but I believe the second time you get a VA loan, it's 3.33% charged to you up front, and then I think it's four and a quarter. And uh, there may be a schedule past that, I've never done it. Anyways, when you are told that a VA loan has no mortgage insurance, if you can see here, that's only kind of half true. Uh, the next one I just wanna talk about really quick is USDA. Now, USDA loans have both upfront and monthly mortgage insurance, and they're both calculated the same way as FHA. So there's a 1% upfront and there's a 0.35% yearly. That's a lot better deal than FHA. Yes, it is. Unfortunately, the USDA program is not available in most any city around here anyways. And it is a very narrow qualifying window. So it's darn near impossible for somebody in the Portland metro area to qualify for a USDA loan. Now it's not impossible, I've done some, but it's a very narrow band. Um, and last, I just wanted to talk about uh, jumbo or portfolio loans. Now, mostly just like conventional loans, if you put 20% down, the mortgage insurance number is zero. Um, and you may hear around that there's like a 5% down or a 3% down uh, no mortgage insurance option. That's really a fallacy and they're kind of trying to trick or confuse you. So they're gonna say something that's technically true, like zero, no mortgage insurance, 5% down, um, you know, no mortgage insurance, 0% down, or there's a few credit unions that actually do that, but they don't charge mortgage insurance, but they charge a way higher than market interest rate. And if they gave you the option of normal mortgage insurance, that would actually be better. Why? Normal, normal mortgage insurance drops off. The higher interest rate isn't ever gonna drop off until you refinance. So mortgage insurance versus higher interest rate, it's kind of the same deal. Uh, remember, I told you to kind of compare, if you wanted to compare a portfolio program that says it doesn't have mortgage insurance at zero to 5% down, you could just look at and compare it to an FHA loan. For the FHA loan, take the you know 2.25% interest or whatever the number is, add that 0.85% to it, and then compare that side by side with the conventional and see if, it, or the not the conventional, the portfolio loan, which probably has a much higher interest rate and see if that really seems better. It's not, it's just putting the numbers somewhere else. They're not gone. And I've gotten in a few weird kind of pointless Facebook's discussions. I think I just need to stop doing that where someone was like, no, our 5% down portfolio is no mortgage insurance. And I'm like, yeah, but your interest rates are an entire percent higher than normal. I think you could fit the mortgage insurance in that entire percent, right? Do you? Anyways, uh, John Wolf, get rich slow with John Wolf. I hope this has helped explain and not just confuse you. Have an awesome day. <laughs> Bye.